Now, Republicans uh, want you to cut Donald Trump some slack. I mean, after all, it's his first job, literally his first job, at least in politics. Now, that's the message, of course, Paul Ryan and other top Republicans are putting out after the Comey hearing. Now, their narrative is essentially, hey, man, look, uh, Trump, he did some improper things you know, like he when he asked Comey to stop investigating Michael Flynn. But don't worry about it. See, he didn't mean to do it because you know what? He doesn't know any better. He's new at the It's his first day. Not not really, but that's essentially what the argument boils down to. Hey, man, I, I'm new at this. So forgive me for doing possible obstruction of justice. <laughs> now, recently, of course, we learned thanks to the extensive notes kept by James Comey, that Trump had asked him to stop the investigation uh, into Russian interference. Now, again, Donald Trump was not being under investigation himself. And that's an important point to remember. But he felt that it cast a cloud around his administration that stopped him from working on his agenda. So, you know, he called up Comey and did some meetings and he says, hey, why don't you drop this investigation? It would help us out a lot. If you just drop the investigation. Now, Comey, in his testimony, said he felt that this was a directive from Trump. And also felt that in ignoring that directive, he felt that that was the reason that he was fired. So that's that's what he says. Okay. Now, Paul Ryan, in defending that, said, hey, man, since Trump's kind of new at this and he's not really very smart, he doesn't know any better. So just just lay off. Let it go. Let it go. Quote, he's new at government, and so therefore, I think that he's learning as he goes. That's Paul Ryan. And what kind of bullshit defense is that? I mean, like, if you do something that's wrong, which at the very least, this is improper for you to ask somebody who, who's investigating something that you may or may not be related to, that's at least related to people in your campaign, well, you're not supposed to ask him, hey, stop investigating. That's just... Again, that is improper and could be considered grounds for obstruction of justice. Again, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know exactly uh, if that's what's, what it's going to lead to. But at the same time, I do know that that's very improper to do. You shouldn't do that. You should be smart enough without being a political genius to know not to do that. It, it just would make sense. Now, do you think that anybody who does something improper or possibly breaks the law, if you just told them, oh, no, dude, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, officer. I'm new at this. I never did this before. Who knew it would be this complicated? Just let me go. I promise I won't do it again now that I know. You think you're going to get away with it? No, of course not. But nobody knew being president would be so complicated. <laughs> Basically, look. What he's saying is that you shouldn't expect to understand the appropriate behavior for someone in the office of the president because uh, he is a businessman not a politician and he's learning that's essentially the, the 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 gist of it you shouldn't expect him to understand that appropriate behavior well look again we know that's bullshit i don't think he's trying to learn at all i just think he's an idiot he ignores briefings for one he doesn't read intelligence reports he watches cable tv all the time uh as much as his aides will let him at least and then hates tweet people or hate tweets people because of it if he were at least making an effort, okay, I would give him some, I'd cut him some slack on that, but he is not, I repeat, he is not putting in any effort to being president at all. He doesn't care. He just thinks being the president is just a way for me to enrich myself and my family. That's all. He didn't even think that, man, I, I didn't think the president had to work so much. I read so many briefings. God, you know what you need to do? You need to condense it down to a page with lots of pretty uh, killer graphics and maps. Again, if he were trying, he would actually know a little bit about some of the policy that he has spoke out in favor of. For example, healthcare. He didn't know what's in the American Healthcare Act. No, no, that's Paul Ryan. That's the Freedom Caucus plan. Okay. That, that's the right wing plan. He doesn't have his own plan. Because when you look at it, when you look at the provisions in the plans, they're not, it doesn't match up with his rhetoric. Oh, it's going to cover everybody. It's going to lower premiums. No, it's not. And that's been proven by the CBO. 
So no, he's not he's not trying. You would also know that thanks to a recent report from members of NBC, uh, that we actually have an airbase in in Qatar, in which we use to launch strikes against ISIS. In fact, this MSNBC report said our base in Qatar is a major hub for operations in the region. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Elliot Cohen, sorry, who was a top lawyer at the State Department under Prince uh, George uh, W. Bush. He said our base in Qatar is a major hub for operations in that region. If he's getting halfway decent briefings on ongoing operations, he would know that. And if he is not being decently briefed, it's on him, no one else. Well, that makes sense. Because we know he's not being properly briefed because you can't be properly briefed with like a half a page full of pictures and maps. That's not how you properly brief a president when it comes to foreign policy or when it comes to any kind of policy. Turns out again, things are complicated. Now he also said ditto leaning on the FBI director to drop a politically inconvenient investigation. Now look, whether you agree or not with the purpose of that air base in, in Qatar, it is kind of important to know that it's at least there. And if like Trump, you want to bomb the hell out of ISIS and you believe that that's the way to go, well, then you might, then it might not be the smartest thing to go out and accuse the country of hosting that base to allow you to carry uh, as, as supporting terrorists. Because again, that base, you kind of need it to conduct operations in the region. It's sort of common sense. Now, personally, I don't believe we should have those bases because what we're doing is we're killing civilians far more than we're killing terrorists. And of course, that has the effect of creating more terrorists. Now, but like I said, if I was a Republican and I was like, yeah, I bombed the hell out of ISIS. Well, my hair would be on fire because we're like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're, you're pissing off our allies. What do you want us to what do you want them to kick our base out of there? No, we're using that base to conduct military operations against ISIS. As a Republican, I'd be in favor of not pissing off uh, Cutter. But again, he's kind of an idiot. <laughs> and unfortunately, that's what Republicans voted for. Somebody who's not very smart. Now look, I know a lot of people voted for him that wanted an outsider, right? I wanted an outsider. And what that means is outside establishment politics. What I didn't mean by that is someone who doesn't know anything about policy and was just going to embarrass the country while championing policies that will end up hurting us. Outsider is not equal to incompetent. It means you're outside the established political framework of neoliberal corporatism. For example, uh, Jeremy Corbyn is an outsider. Bernie Sanders is an outsider. Bernie Sanders has been in Congress for like, what, 40 years. And he has a long record of public service, but he's outside that framework of establishment politics. He's not a former businessman, okay? He didn't, uh, you know, grow up in the private sector. They have experience and they know what to do. They know uh, etiquette and policy. Donald Trump is an outsider in the vein that he has no fucking clue what he's doing. But what's worse, because I would, I would be okay with somebody who, hey man, I don't have a background in politics, but I got elected. But I, don't worry, I'm willing to learn. And I've been studying up and I'm reading every day and I'm up on the policy and all that stuff. Okay, I would give him credit for that. I would give anybody credit for that. Because you're trying to learn. Donald Trump, he ain't trying to learn. Okay? And when it comes to being outside of the neoliberal corporate structure, Donald Trump isn't even outside of that. His infrastructure plan, for example, literally sells off our infrastructure to giant corporations and foreign governments. His tax cuts primarily benefit the wealthiest Americans and biggest corporations. This guy's not burning down the system. All he's doing is breaking it apart and selling it off for personal profit. Now, his supporters, unfortunately, and those party leaders, they didn't really care about that. And they thought, well, man, he look, he's a smart, successful businessman. He'll adapt, he'll thrive. Wrong on both counts. Turns out he's a terrible businessman. If you'd followed him at all and looked up uh, his history at all, you would know that he's a terrible businessman. He's gone bankrupt six times. And then, of course, he gets bailed out by daddy's money. And then he doesn't pay back his loans. He stiffs his workers. He stiffed the Freedom Girls. I mean, seriously. Like, who does that? What kind of supposed billionaire does that? 
he does he didn't pay taxes some years or very very low tax rates of course a lot of republicans are like that's smart not paying your taxes super smart now some supporters however do concede that five months in trump has not been learning as quickly as they might have hoped one Republican National Committee member said privately, the voters wanted an outsider, and these are things you get with someone from outside. Again, that's not necessarily true, um, because somebody who's on the outside, who's truly on the outside, doesn't have any political experience, they can learn. Again, Donald Trump has not learned. He's learned almost nothing, and they literally have to keep him away from TV and away from Twitter. To make sure he doesn't say or do something incre incredibly reckless and stupid. Donald Trump has failed upwards all his life. Simply because he has money. He's not a successful person. He just failed upwards. He never really learned how to be good at anything. So I guess the question is, why start now? I don't have an answer. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.